Next up in the hat challenge, a fur-brimmed hat. I'm doing this with my Facebook Corona Knitting Machine group. They get to propose a technique, and I turn it into a simple hat pattern. Based on my Stripping for Charity book, we're making a whole strip of hats, all different, but still all in one strip. Fur is actually surprisingly easy to knit on a bulky machine, but I don't really recommend casting on with it. It can be tricky, and it's not as strong as other yarns, so we would want to avoid that. I suggest chain stitching left to right loosely around the needle shanks, threading that yarn into the carriage, the same one we chain stitched with, knitting one row, and I suggest maximum stitch size, and then changing over to your fur yarn. The reason I want the first row large is that it will help the knitting drop down so that the chain stitched cast on is not right up by the needles and the sinkers. Because we don't want our fur yarn and our chain stitch to be overly close together up there by the sinkers because it gets in the way. This is also true on other Japanese machines, but not as much true on fixed gate pegs as I find it to be on movable gate pegs, otherwise known as sinkers. This is the third of my hats with fur, and I've figured out how to get it to knit smoothly on the Corona, so let me share what I've found out. You see that I'm hand-feeding the yarn. Sometimes when it goes through the tensioner, that's too much drag. Also, I am pulling down the knitting after every single row because the hairs on this kind of yarn tend to get caught in and amongst the sinkers. It holds the fabric up, makes the next pass of the carriage difficult, and can even cause tangling. You're now looking at how the knitting proceeded before I figured that out. Much bumpier. I also found it helpful to tilt my can of silicon lubricant so that I could lubricate the underside and lower edges of the sinkers or movable gate pegs themselves. It made an astonishing difference to the smoothness of the knitting while knitting fur. I have found for a long time that Lion Brand Fun Fur is the perfect machine knitting furry yarn. The reason is that its central core is relatively strong and slim. Its lashes are medium length and it doesn't have any slubs, bumps, or fuzzy bits, just a central core and eyelashes. And all of those features make it run better than any other for a yarn I have used. So, onto the pattern. Seven maximum stitch size rows of the furry yarn, then change to the main yarn and main stitch size. And for the first four of the 36 top of the hat rows, we're going to need to continue pulling down because those hairs extend out past the knitting that they were knitted into and they still get in the way. After about four, I found knitting could proceed completely normally. So our pattern is one plain stock and knit row with smooth yarn, seven with fur yarn at maximum stitch size, 36 with the main yarn at main stitch size, and scrap off. If that row count sounds unusual to you, that is because it's fewer than we usually knit. The reason being that if you knit with a smooth yarn and don't do anything else to the bottom edge like ribbing or hang a hem, it rolls up and we lose length. The furry yarn tends not to roll very much, so it actually does add length to the hat. It's a good idea to do this step before seaming the edges and gathering the crown. With your fingertips or a comb, or here I'm seeing if the prong tool will do the job, Try to release all the eyelashes from where they're caught in the knit stitches. The harder you work at this, the fluffier and prettier the fur brim will be. Then finish the hats just like all the others, gathering the crown, seaming the two edges together. We're not done yet. There are more hats to come. See you soon.